Good morning, Paul. It's Monday, the 13th of February. Here's a heads up brief for today. For the Southeast Asia production, we covered 16 issues. For North Asia, we covered five. And for the Australasia and Pacific Islands, we covered eight issues. In South Asia, we covered 17 issues, plus the major issues in the Europe, Middle East, and Africa region. Okay, hope you had a great weekend. Go ahead, Wood. Thanks, Paul. So in Indonesia, the Federation of Indonesian Metal Workers will protest at uh, the uh, office of PLN, the state electricity uh, company in Jakarta tomorrow. They're demanding uh, regularization and better worker protections. Okay, thanks. Uh, right now in Jakarta, the Ferdi Sambo trial is ongoing and the verdict, verdict is expected today. Okay, well, that um, has great potential. So that and the previous issue with the union is that so there likely to be demonstrations. Have we identified the locations and distributed that to clients? Yes, Paul. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, and also in Maluku, uh, 15 million cubic feet of gas was discovered on Saram Island. All right. Do we know who discovered it and the potential um, to tap it? Is it very high grade? How much carbon dioxide's in it. Just give me a little bit more information sure. sent to me to later today. Thank you. We'll do that, Paul. In Myanmar, the military uh, issued a statement that said that loyal civilians will be allowed to carry licensed arms, and these will range from pistols to assault weapons. Well, that uh, once again emphasizes their complete and utter madness. Thank you. Uh, in New Zealand, uh, because of Cyclone Gabriel, flight operations were disrupted on North Island. Uh, Air New Zealand, I think, cancelled around 500 flights, uh, but they are expected to come return back to normal tomorrow. Okay, thanks a lot. And look, just going back to that Myanmar situation, you, you know a government's losing. They're, 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 they're obviously fearing their own capability when they're having to um civilians that they deem loyal and um i'm sure they're going to learn a very very hard lesson there um because there'll be many that they won't be able to ascertain as loyal and those citizens that are loyal are unlikely to be able to protect their weapons it's absolute madness okay thank you all right uh, Paul, in South Asia, 200 people were injured and at least 200 people were injured in political clashes in Bangladesh over the weekend. Uh, this was after the Bangladesh Nationalist Party had organized countrywide protests and the ruling Awami League organized counter rallies. Uh, there's, the Bangladesh Nationalist Party is also planned for protests on February 18th, so we're likely to see similar violence. Okay, it'd be good to know exactly exactly where with a uh, specific map on where those injuries occurred, okay, both for myself and distribute it to relevant clients, okay? Yeah, sure. We'll do, Paul. And then moving on to India, uh, authorities arrested two suspected terrorists, one in Bangalore in Karnataka and one in Thane, uh, which is just on the outskirts of Mumbai in Maharashtra over the weekend. Okay, interesting. Thank you. Uh, lastly, in the Europe, Middle East, and Africa region, in Spain, hundreds of thousands of healthcare workers protested in Madrid yesterday uh, against the government o over various issues. In France, on the day before, hundreds of thousands of people also protested against the pension reform. Okay, thanks, Jordan. And look, I think we need to, whilst we were fortunate enough not to have any clients directly impacted in the Turkish earthquake, I think we do need to continue to know that there's potentially going to be a real unseating of power there. Yep. I notice they've issued 150 breaches of building standards, but of course they'll hit the contractors, but not the officials. So the officials that signed off on all of this inadequate construction work are very unlikely to be impacted. Also the total lack of response in Turkey um, and also in Syria, that'll also go unchecked in terms of, accountability for government. So that can potentially have a massive you know, murder against power base and the Syrian authorities, they're both in a position position that's going to be particularly precarious now because you can bluff and lie and steal so much, but when you get caught out, you get caught out. So the reality is particularly the Turkish government's doing its best to set up a PR campaign based on this is, you know, the worst national disaster we've had for 100 years, yet it's also evident 
governance of pathetic governance that's eyes and ears are on everything that pertains to their own gains, but not to those of the society. And Syria is exactly the same, just without the ability to conduct a false PR campaign. So we really need to keep a close eye on how that's going to change the power bases, short, mid and long term in both countries. Okay. Great, definitely, Paul. Turkey will have elections this year also, so we're monitoring that. Yeah, look, and I think it's also just worth, obviously there's this pending um, results on the negotiations going on for the New Zealand pilot that was kidnapped in Papua. We need to keep an eye on that. The information I'm getting back is that the um, International Red Cross and the UN were involved in trying to get some kind of resolution for the lack of power and lack of investment in Papua. They've had a fit and darky and stormed off during this situation. The kidnapping has basically exposed a whole heap of inadequacies. We already know in Papua that the police are very heavily involved in businesses, particularly illegal gold mining. Um, They're not so involved in actually maintaining peace and order like a normal police force does. They give that some cursory appearance of effort. So the Indonesian military that's improved drastically in the last couple of decades, it's trying to get involved and hold the fort together and fill the void left by the police's extremely strong and emphasis on on making money. Um, Not for one instance, um, conveying the Indonesian military is 100% clean, but it is significantly better than the police and significantly more capable technically. So they're between a rock and a hard place. I'm throwing into that. Indonesia is going to have a change of government coming up. They're trying to fund new provinces in Papua. They've always pulled the resources out of Papua and treated the Papuans with great disdain. Um, Meanwhile, the TPNP is extorting um, government budgets that make its way to the village chiefs and the heads of regions or the parties, as they're called in Indonesia. So Papua is really um, continuing to deteriorate. The TPNP seems to be the most effective armed force in the country. And when you've got about a million police and army in your provinces, you kind of hope that a renegade group of about 40 armed criminals isn't the most powerful, but when those that are armed and trained are more focused on on business, and when the political leaders in Indonesia are more focused on raping the place than helping it, um, ultimately it's inevitable where it's going to head. And, of course, the IRC and the UN are in there in flashy cars and highly paid for apartments, flying business class to resolve the problems of the poor in Papua. So we really need to keep a close eye on that. Um, that report we're doing on the Melanesian Highlands, Papua and PNG in particular. Um, I want to give you some injection of inputs into that on Monday and Tuesday, okay? Oh, sorry, on Tuesday and Wednesday, all right? Great, we'll do it all. All right, great stuff. What an excellent brief as always. Um, thank you. Thanks.